my greatest memory of Bob was, was actually February 27th of 2006 when Buck was up for induction into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. And be quite frankly, y'all, we all thought it was a shoe-in that Buck O'Neill is going to get in the Hall of Fame. Now, you may recall that the Hall of Fame had put together a committee of 12 Negro League historians, researchers, and educators who were essentially going to determine the fate of the final group that had made the ballot, about 35 plus that had made the final ballot. There was no limitation for the number of players they could put in, but this was going to be kind of the final swoop in terms of inducting Negro League players into the Hall of Fame. They had all gathered in Tampa, Florida. And so Buck O'Neill and I left home the morning of February 27, 2006, with suitcases packed, with airline tickets that the Hall of Fame had purchased for us. That's how sure we were he was going to get in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> and so at that time, I'm the marketing director for the museum. And so I had brokered a deal with Sprint. So I've got my Sprint phone, Buck got his Sprint phone. We're going to take the Hall of Fame call on the Sprint phone. <laughs> and then Sprint going to pay us a bunch of money. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant, if I have to say so myself. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so the call was supposed to come to me that morning around 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock rolls around, I don't get a phone call. Finally, about noon, my colleague, Dr. Ray Doswell, who was one of the 12 members who was down in Florida making this decision on who gets in. He calls me and says, well, Bob, this thing is looking tight. We just did straw vote. Buck is coming up one vote shot. I call my friend Joe Posnanski, the great sports writer, who's in the, in the conference room with Buck at our offices at the Negro Leagues Museum. I call him out. I say, hey, Joe, I just got a call from Ray, and Ray says this thing is tight. They just did straw vote. Buck's coming up one vote shot. They just went back in. Former Commissioner Faye Vincent was overseeing the committee. And he says they just went back in to talk specifically about Buck O'Neill and Minnie Minoso. He's in disbelief. Finally, about 2 o'clock, I get a call from Jeff Idelson. Jeff Idelson was, at that time, the vice president of marketing for the National Baseball Hall of Fame. He just recently retired as president of the National Baseball Hall of Fame. And Jeff calls me and he says, well, Bob, Buck didn't get enough votes. Hmm. And fellas, I felt like somebody had kicked me in my gut. Because mm -hmm. now I got to go back in this conference room and tell my friend that he didn't get enough votes when I know in his heart he thought he was in. Right, Why right. wouldn't he? Yeah. And, and so I go back in the room and I say, well, I, Joe Paz, Buck is seated at the head of the table. Joe Paz is on the opposite side of the table. I go across the room and I sit across from Joe. And I say, well, Buck, we didn't get enough votes. And he looks up at me and he smiles. He says, that's how the cookie crumbles. <laughs> and in the next voice, he asked me how many had gotten in. I said, 17. Now, I'll be honest, I was furious sure. because in my mind, you can't put 17 in and leave Buck out. Sure. He hits the table in utter jubilation. He is excited that 17 of his colleagues had gotten their rightful place in the National Baseball Hall of Fame. He asked me who they were. Well, I didn't have that information at that point in time. And the next words that came out of his mouth, I, I wonder if the Hall of Fame will invite me to speak. Now, Joe Posnanski had turned beet red. He <laughs> is furious. Right. He looks at Buck and he says, Buck, you wouldn't do that, would you? Buck says, Joe, of course I would. What has my life been about? And I say, well, Buck, I need to go downstairs because down on our field, over 300 people had gathered for what we all thought was going to be a Hall of Fame celebration announcement. I said, Buck, I need to go downstairs. I'll deliver the news. I'll come back and get you because I think you should address the group. It's been a long day. Well, as I oftentimes tell the story, from our upstairs conference room to the field of legends down inside the Negro Leagues Museum was the longest walk of my life. I am literally trying to coach myself. Bob, you can't cry. <laughs> Whatever you do, you can't cry. This is your job. You got to suck it up. The more I'm telling myself not to cry, 
tears and standing <laughs> and, 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 and we had the podium at second base. And guys, this is the honest to God's truth. I have yet to go back to watch the video. I have no idea what I said that day. <laughs> Whatever it was, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. People were openly emotional. And man, this wasn't disappointment. This was anger. It was outrage. Well, Buck walks in through our gift shop. And of course, the room erupts into this thunderous ovation. And he walks up to the podium and for lack of a better term, delivered one of the most amazing concession speeches that I'd ever heard. What he did that day was he literally implored all of us not to be angry, not to be bitter, not to express any ill will toward anyone who had anything to do with this decision. He said, I had an opportunity. And in this great country of ours, that's all you could ever ask. They didn't think old Buck was good enough. We got to live with that. But if I'm a Hall of Famer in your eyes, that's all that matters to me. Just keep on loving old Buck. Now, guys, I'm over in the corner now. <laughs> I am an absolute wreck at this point in time. Tears are free flowing falling from my eyes. But what Buck did that day was he literally reached out his arms, wrapped them around all of us, and said, it's okay. Instead of us consoling him, he was consoling us. And what I still say, to be one of the most amazing displays of strength of character that I'd ever witnessed. He would push aside his disappointment, go to Cooperstown, deliver this incredible speech on behalf of 17 dead folks who did not have a voice. Yeah, they didn't have a voice. Right. And there was Buck being their voice. And again, what I say to be one of the most selfless acts in American sports history, a little over two months later, old Buck passed away himself at age 94, a month shy of his 95th birthday. Mm. I will remember that day for the rest of my life, or as my mother would say, as long as I'm in my natural mind, it was one of the most disappointing days for me both personally and professionally, but it was also one of the most inspirational days that I think I've ever witnessed in my life. Wow. Mm. Wow. Uh, just thank you for that story, man. I'm getting choked up. I'm getting choked up just here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's a level of dignity we don't we don't get to see too often. No, no. We could use a whole lot more Buck O'Neill in this world today. Yes. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yes, indeed. 